In this episode, we take a look at a beautiful deck of cards with some controversial choices. The Amazon Spartans deck. Plus, I announce the winner of the Darren Brown deck. And remember, for the best in playing cards content, like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. There's a lot to love about the deck I'm going to show you in this episode, but unfortunately, there's also a lot I don't like. In fact, I was going to skip this deck for review because, well, in essence, I just felt odd about promoting the deck when some of the ideas within felt a little bit old world and out of touch. You'll see what I mean in a few. In the end though, I obviously decided to go forward with the review because the truth is there's a lot to say about this deck, both good and bad. Starting with the fact that it has an absolutely gorgeous tuck case. These are the Amazon Spartan Ephebes and Ephros editions. Released as part of a Kickstarter campaign launched about a year ago, mid-2019, the decks finally arrived in the hands of backers during tumultuous June 2020. The decks come packaged in some of the most beautiful tuck cases of the year, if not the best of 2020 thus far. Brilliant metallic foils, gold and green on the Ephibis, and silver and gold on the Ephoros. Premium matte cardstock and deep, purposeful embossing all in service of wonderful design and typography. There's quite a bit to unpack within the names thrown around on these decks. For one thing, the term Amazon these days is quickly associated with the home delivery retail giant owned by Jeff Bezos. And of course, still others will recognize the term as the name given to one of the world's longest rivers, which stretches 4,000 miles inland into Brazil from the Atlantic Ocean. But the original use for the name Amazon comes from Greek mythology. Amazons were a fearsome tribe of warrior women who, in some versions of the myth, lived isolated from men and only interacted with them to reproduce, raising just the female offspring. Some of you out there will undoubtedly recognize that myth as the one appropriated by DC Comics, which features heavily into the lore and origins of Wonder Woman. In fact, the same of you out there will probably recognize the term Spartans from the film 300 which of course is another adaptation of a comic book, a series of the same name by Frank Miller. The Spartans, however, are not born of mythology, but rather of history. In antiquity, the city-state of Sparta was the preeminent military land power of the Greek region. Both militaristic tribes, therefore, mythological and historical, share one common Greek warrior trait. And as such, the front of the tuck box features several motifs that are clearly inspired by the Greek art of antiquity. For one thing, the principal design shape of the artwork mimics the traditional shape of the battle shield. The deck name, Spartans Amazons, is written across the front of the shield in a convex arc, with much more weight given to Amazons. In a small concentric circle above the deck titles, the image of a Spartan's helm, complete with horse's mane, behind it two cross swords and a bolt of lightning, presumably called in by Zeus himself. The circle is framed by the Greek pattern known as a meander or meandros. Above the circle, in tiny type, the design firm 7th Nation and the manufacturer USPCC get a mention. Mirrored in the design, at the bottom is another small circle, this one featuring a symbol meant to represent the Alpha and the Omega, which of course are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet, famously co-opted by the Bible in Revelations 22.13. The front of the box denotes this as volume 1, presumably of more, and announces the tuck's contents as 54 premium cards, which is actually a mistake as we'll see. The entire design on the front is framed by Greek style columns, which feature some additional type. The term epic tale above, the years of design 2017 and production 2019 in Roman numerals below, and the Latin phrase bellum omnium contra omnis, which translates to the war of all against all. I told you there was a lot to unpack here. The traditional pips, of course, all make their appearances, and there are some intertwined letters, NS and AS, which I confess I wasn't sure of, but I think stand for 7th Nation and the Spartans Amazons, respectively. All in all, I think there just might be a little bit too much going on here, but nonetheless, the tucks are gorgeous and make the decks worthy of collection on their merit alone. 
The sides of the boxes feature some nice filigree framing along with the aforementioned intertwined letters and once again denote the name of the deck. The top of the box omits the NS and AS, although keeping everything else. The bottom includes the traditional United States playing card company ad copy. The back of the box includes what we will call a quote unquote representation of the back design that is highly accurate in some ways and not very in others. The shield design is kept more or less within the same Greek column framing that exists on the front of the box. The pips found on the front are on the backs replaced with traditional directional markers denoting north, south, east and west. The center point of the back of the tuck is a small A-like symbol that perhaps is meant to represent Amazons but more likely harkens to the design of the Spartan shields of antiquity, again familiar to fans of the movie 300. Mentions for the designer 7th Nation Altelier and the manufacturer's USPCC appear as well. Opening the tuck reveals the cards to be oddly unfamiliar. Yes, the overall design is very similar to the back of the tuck boxes, but there have been some stark changes, including the color palettes, aqua and yellow for the Ephibes edition and aqua and gray for the Ephros edition. The design has also been altered to be a two-way friendly deck, which has an odd side effect of making the A design in the center feel more like mirrored Ws. I gotta be honest, when I originally opened this deck, I felt like I'd had a momentary lapse and mistakenly grabbed the wrong one. I was like fully expecting the deep red and greens of the Ephibes edition tuck case to make it onto the cards and I was actually pretty disappointed to see that the colors had changed. Not that there's anything specifically wrong or offensive with the color palette of the cards, it's just that it kind of comes out of nowhere on both decks. It's a, it's a pretty odd choice really I'm not 100% on board with. For years I've been lambasting Theory 11 about the unfulfilled promise of their tucks and the Amazons are quite frankly more of a departure than even those maligned Theory 11 decks are. Still, the backs are pretty nice and they work well within the white poker border. These are completely custom cards down to the pips and indices which are both smaller and more compact than standard pips and indices. The decks feature some nice ornamented aces which feature another ring of meandros pattern and squiggly sun rays emanating from the center pip. The ace of spades is particularly nice featuring an architectural frame with a gabled set of columns. I'm about to show you the main reason I struggled so much with this deck, the court cards. They're a paradox of design and choice and motive that left me at the same time impressed and frankly a little disturbed. Well look, that might be a strong choice of words, there's nothing inherently offensive with them other than perhaps a disregard for more modern sensibilities. You could also say that they are too modern, but perhaps in the wrong way. The court cards in the Ephibes edition are a set of fully illustrated photorealistic portraits of beautiful warrior women, clothed not too dissimilarly from the Amazon warriors seen in 2017's Wonder Woman, all of them with weapons in hand and framed with flowing cloth and brass Greek helms. The Ephros edition features these same courts, although they have had an additional piece of armor binding or plating added, and in the case of some, tattoo and body art was added as well. The artwork itself is, in a word, magnificent. The models are all sultry and slender even though they have larger than average assets. But there are a few things that actually bother me here. First of all, not to take away from the photorealistic art, it's all done very well, but perhaps that modern approach doesn't really jive with the classical inspiration of the deck, which for the project creator himself was the Amazon sarcophagus carved between 310 and 330 BC. To that end, perhaps the court card should have been immortalized in statues of marble and bronze rather than leather clad flesh. At the very least, perhaps the woman should have looked more in line with the standard of beauty of the era rather than more modern standards that you and I are used to today. In fact, it's the sexualization and revealing nature of the flesh that makes me ultimately uncomfortable. On top of the fact that none of the women depicted as Greek warriors give off any kind of ethnic vibe. Some are even flaunting red hair. Just for argument's sake, about 6% of the British population have red hair and less than 0.5% in the Sardinia region have red hair and Greece is even further to the west. But 
ethnic accuracy apart. None of the women really look like warriors either. They look like models role-playing as warriors. Anyone who's played the highly controversial Last of Us Part Two recently knows what a strong warrior woman looks like, and none of these court cards feature the kind of musculature you would need to wield a heavy shield and sword. In fact, I think the inclusion of some more battle-hardened women would have made me feel okay with the presence of the beautiful femme fatale seductress warrior too. As it is, it kind of just comes across as objectifying ancient Greek warriors and really it feels a little bit tone deaf in 2020. Let me know in a comment if you agree. Maybe I'm crazy. Anyway, I'm not arguing that we can't celebrate the beauty of the female form either. It's worth noting that the artist behind the courts, Sviatoslav Paschuk, I hope I'm saying that right, <laughs> created a military pinup girl deck recently that features seductive ladies in uniform, a common trope of the 1940s that has factual and historical basis to justify it. Once again, I don't want to diminish or take anything away from the artist's talent here. My qualm here is one of philosophy. You could argue that perhaps that's the point and intention behind the Amazon's deck all along, but the Tuck case just feels like it's advertising a more sophisticated product with deeper meaning and thought rather than something to just fawn over. The deck also includes four additional cards on top of the 52 in the deck, totaling 56, not 54 as advertised on the box. There's a double backer, an odd choice for a deck not well suited to magic. There's an ad card, another scantily clad Amazon queen holding two lilies. The jokers perhaps drive home the oddity of the modern woman wearing the clothing of antiquity more than any other. There's just something off about the representation that feels insincere or artificial. I said I had a lot to say. Look, I know exactly what it's like to put your heart and soul into a deck of cards or any product for that matter, video reviews included. So it's really hard for me to give critiques sometimes. And I hope the project creators, if they're watching this, understand my criticism aims to be constructive. And ultimately it's my opinion we're talking about. And we all know opinions are like assholes. I should mention that the decks handle beautifully as to be expected from any decks manufactured by the United States Playing Cards Company. Springs, fans, and flourishes look great and feel great as well. Congrats to Matthias A on winning the Darren Brown deck. Contact me via Instagram to claim your prize. To check out another deck with a gorgeous tuck case, click on the review of the Damas deck by Lotrek. I've been The Gentleman Wake. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time.